All right, time for a MS walking video. It's been a while. Hanging out in my wildflower backyard. <clears throat> it's like these things pop up for about a month and a half, two months every year. And all the neighbors <laughs> just mow them down. But I like to leave them up for a month and a half or so. I'll let, their, let them go for a few weeks, then I'll cut them down, have some newer ones ready to pop up as I cut down the old ones. But yeah, it's like it's free flowers, free pollen for the butterflies and the bees and the bumblebees and all the critters that help us grow our food. So it's like why people don't care about it. I don't know. They'd rather spray chemicals all over their yards and kill us and the critters around us. So we have less and less every year. There is a bumblebee shortage at the moment. So quit killing bumblebees if you can. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the bumblebees are having lots of problems at the moment. And that's not good for our future. We need those critters, otherwise we're not going to survive. Uh, my cat made it halfway up the hill. That's as far as he did. I'm working on day, oh, uh, day five or six of my weed whacking. Let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, six trees done the first day in the front yard along with my little signpost and then second day i got the bird feeding area and one other tree the third day i got two more trees and a little flower area done And then the next day I was doing some edging. Now today I did the first trees you see there on my tree line. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight trees done. And I was wiped. And my weed whacker's laying by the ninth tree just waiting. I figured I'd do a few videos and maybe hopefully get through at least those next six trees get halfway to the deer at least and get six more trees done then I can tomorrow come out and do the deer area and maybe get to the shed and then I'll do the shed area the day after that and then I'll just have some little cleanup <laughs> and by then it's basically time to start the shit over again but this is my first weed whacking of the year because my MS was really bad this spring. My MS pain, so. <clears throat> and my MS walking. I was having trouble walking. I got a little robin looking for some birds. Or some worms, not birds. The early bird gets the worm, dummy. You're up too late. You're supposed to be up early. You're supposed to be up at 5 a.m. when the sun comes up. <laughs> got two rabbits that every morning at 4.30 or so, 4.35 o'clock, yeah, around 4.30. They pop on the back porch. One's been hopping up in the one flower pot, eating the dead grass that's laying in there. The other one's climbing on my wood pile. I don't know if he's eating the tiny sticks or just biting them into pieces. He's, I'm sitting there watching him bite a bunch of my tiny sticks and it's like, dude, now I gotta pick all those little pieces up. I got them just piled so I can grab them and throw them in the fire. Uh, but yeah, they've been hanging out. Got like four rabbits that have been hanging out, but two of them really like that back porch in the morning for some reason. Got a really fat raccoon that's been hanging out. Got a good video of him that I'll be posting on my Facebook this week of him climbing on my one water device. Uh, we got half a dozen or so deer that have been hanging out running through our backyard they go up over this hill every day and every morning and every night they come come up over the hill at night and then they come back in the morning and 
come through our backyard and run back over the hill. But yeah, it's it's awesome having that. But other than that, my physical therapy, I asked my therapist this week. <coughs> I did my lymphedema therapy for a month and a half or so. And then I had to go to this walking therapy, which I got, I want to say about two months worth of therapy out of. Good month and a half, two months every week. Tons of exercises they gave me for it. And it got to the point where I I'm, went in this last week and I'm like, okay, I got 14 exercise type things, exercises, massages, whatever I have to do for my lymphedema. I'm supposed to be doing that every day and I'm not getting it done every day because I also have 25 to 30 exercises so far from you guys because every time I come you give me another three to five workouts to do at home and I'm still doing the old ones because you never told me not to. And I'm just struggling and it's just making my the bone chunks that are in my knees move around so much that it's getting so painful because they're all knee related and ankle related exercises and I'm like I think we should focus more on upper body and more on movement things I want to do like bicycle leg presses stuff like that and not worry about uh, doing these weird warrior poses and stuff because that's why I quit doing my yoga which all the things they're teaching me in therapy or yoga basically things I did in my yoga but I quit doing it just because of the knee popping and the bone chunks and the bone on bone and all that and no ACLs and all that crap and I wanted new exercises that were non related to that but they still focused on that stuff yeah. <laughs> I don't know if the sun's pounding here or not, but you got a big old plane flying over. It's not quite time. Oh, there it is. I don't know if you see it on there or not. It's not quite time for the EAA air show. We still got probably about uh, three, four weeks. Usually starts about early July, early mid July. And then the Fonlac air shows a little bit later in August but uh, uh what was I talking about oh yeah my therapy but yeah they so I'm like oh, how about this can we uh call this the last uh, last therapy session for now and give me the next two months or so to get caught up on all my yard work because it's the therapy with going to therapy, plus doing all this stuff, and the lymphedema stuff and everything, I was just so sore, I just, I'm struggling to get my yard work done, and this time of year, I should be able to do, I mean, it's like getting those eight trees done today was my day's worth of weed whack, and normally, but normally last year, I would have got more to, I would have got all the way down to the deer probably, before I had to give it up and last year also i at the end of the year i bought a brand new weed whacker i had two brand new batteries my old weed whacker that i used up until the end of last year the two batteries wouldn't hold a charge for more than four or five trees at a time so i'm constantly going back sticking them on a charger it takes half a day for the fuckers to charge <laughs> sit there and Grab one, use it, throw it on a charger, grab the other one, use it, and then you get back down and the other one's still charging. And you're like, man, I'm, I, I'm still good to go for one more battery's worth of charge if I had another battery. So I finally broke down. They had the weed whacker with the two batteries and an air blower all for 120 bucks on sale for like 99, 99 or some shit. So I'm like, screw it. I'm just going to let the house buy it for me. I figured six years of working on this house, it, I deserve at least a couple new tools. So I bought that and I bought myself a cheap ass $20 big 
battery operated drill because my drill the batteries don't keep a charge either anymore so it's like all that shit works awesome for a few years and then the batteries just you got to stock up on those batteries the extra batteries because a lot of the companies like my my favorite drill i can't find those damn batteries anymore you'd think you'd still be able to but they're the round ones and just no luck with it but yeah so i'm like could we do that and she's like yeah you just gotta put in a new order through your doctor and then we can sit there and set up for therapy again and i'm like awesome that is a deal i will sit there and do do what i can this summer i will keep up with she gave me five main exercises to work on which is awesome because they are decent ones that aren't going to wreck my knees too bad so i'm like that's good i'll focus on that and the lymphedema workout and then working on this damn yard and getting this shit done because this thing's a full-time job pretty much when you have multiple sclerosis and you can only do so much at a time so yeah i will do that and then come probably i'll probably wait till september around early fall sit there and go back and do some new physical therapy uh so i'm looking forward to that still not happy that i'm not on any type of dmt i don't understand why uh i brought up the pain issues the complete body pain which my pcp knows about from all the years with ms but she's like well the one thing i can think of is putting you on cymbalta which once i got home and thought about it it's like well that it messes with one of my medications that i'm on which i shouldn't be on which i'm trying to get off of but it can increase the pot potency of that medication and it's like well then i should be on half that medication instead of full one so it's like i'm not going to even try consider trying it until then but cymbalta is the one medication that messed with me and gave me that super diarrhea and all that stuff and i'm like well i don't want to do that and it's an antidepressant and all that also so i don't know i'm not sure if i'm gonna even mess with it if i'm gonna take it for right now i'm gonna wait till i see my cardiologist to talk to him about the reaction it has with one of his pills that he has me on and we'll go from there but i'm not even gonna take the chance with it uh other than that, I'm just on my regular heart crap that the one jackass doctor stuck me on that I don't, shouldn't be on because according to my eye doctor, I've never had high blood pressure, so I don't know why I'm on all these stupid medications just because the doctor didn't understand what multiple sclerosis was back in the day when we were telling him, and he was just looking at me and saying, heart, 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 heart. It's all heart related. <laughs> And the stupid bastard's got his own his own practice now which is sad because there's so many other people that I talk to from our community that he just put them on the wrong medications mixed medications and stuff that caused them to have problems and all this stuff and he has his own practice now in a bigger town <laughs> it's just it's so sad uh, neurologist wise I can't find anybody in the state that I haven't seen or could go see that would be any different than what I'm dealing with so I don't think I'm gonna have any luck there changing my program getting me on a program that I want to be on to try and get myself on a routine that I can enjoy the rest of my life with as little freaking suffering from this stupid disease as possible but I don't know what to do I just this new neurologist doesn't obviously thinks I'm perfectly fine to go without anything so I don't know what to do I'm just going to keep working with this physical therapy I got the bike set up in the garage with my punching bag that's going to be my side routine just do that and work my ass off in this yard and for the next couple months and get as much done and hopefully still be walking by the end of summer and then get back into therapy and hopefully by then 
I'm gonna, I told her I'm going to try and get back into my DDP yoga in about a month. I just need to get this overall body pain to come down a little. Because with the, with every cell in your body being, feeling bruised, every drop of sweat, every <laughs> hair, every muscle, every everything just burns and is bruised feeling. A couple more planes flying around. That one right there, a little jet stream behind it. But yeah, with all the pain and everything, I just, the yoga is so hard because all the different flexing and moving, it's just really tough trying to do all those routines. It's like I'm good with the middle section. Once we hit the warrior poses, I start having problems because no ACL and the bone on bone. Uh, and the ground exercises are rough. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna give it about a month. Hopefully the yard work and everything and the routine I'm doing will at least bust my body loose enough that I can maybe try yoga again. And then we'll see what happens because I'd love to get a month's worth of yoga in before I go see her. And then I can show her <laughs> a 400 pound guy that can stick his leg up over his head <laughs> so, uh, I get very flexible I've always been a very flexible person but when your muscle pains take over it ruins the flexibility <laughs> uh, and I make sure my yep gotta make sure my thing's still going because it stopped on me and when I tried to record the other day I didn't realize I had an hour-long video on here it took up all the space but uh I wanted to mention, my brother mentioned someone that's been having problems that worked with him for over the past years. And uh, some of the things she was having problems with in the past, I did mention, she should get tested for MS because they sound MS related. And sure as shit, she found out she's dealing with MS now and she's new to it. So I figured something good uh, to talk about MS related is when what you do when you're newly diagnosed with stuff. I just gotta double check, make sure I can't talk about things I wanted to. But yeah, basically if you do get diagnosed, number one, be smart about things. Uh, she's struggling to work right now for them. Struggling to do anything because she's in that phase where you basically want to curl up in a corner and die every time the pains take over. You don't know what these pains are. You don't know what you're dealing with. A lot of them feel like heart related uh, pains. So you get freaked out. Feel like you're having a heart attack. Jesus. I don't know what the hell this is. But it is making a lot of noise. Holy shit, it is a fighter jet. I had a fighter jet flying over low. What the hell is he flying so low for? That is kind of unusual this time of year. I mean, we don't have military maneuvers going on at the moment. But holy shit. <laughs> that was kind of cool. <laughs> I hope it's ours. <laughs> because he's flying way lower than usual. You do not see him that low. I mean, Christ, I could kind of feel the feel the reverberation from the backwash of the jet. Yeah, that was, that was kind of interesting. Definitely do not see that often. <clears throat> that was a good pickup for a podcast today. <laughs> Damn. I really want to know who that was. Why Why would he be... Because when we have any type of military maneuvers out here, it's usually helicopter related. So that's kind of strange that we got a fighter jet. In this area, it's not on a normal route path, pathway and pattern that they'd run on around the Oshkosh, Milwaukee area and stuff like that, Green Bay. So that's kind of weird. 
now I'm curious if I'll hear anything on the news. Uh, so we don't have no events right now. Like I said, EA shouldn't be for a few more weeks now. Uh, the Blue Angels came out for like a baseball game and stuff like that. But that's nothing like that's going on that I know of at the moment. So, but anyways, if you're newly diagnosed with MS, you're gonna go through all the, you're gonna go through a lot of weird pains, changes, issues, problems. Uh, I'd say number one, take vitamin D. I do 5,000 IU's a day just to start, and then set it up with your PCP get your blood blood work done and make sure you get your vitamin D tested and any of your vitamins that you can and stuff like that so you know where your magnesium levels are, your vitamin D levels are, your vitamin B levels are. Anything that you can get tested, get tested. I, I, you'll usually have an annual health and wellness exam. Get set up for that and they'll do the blood work and go over all that stuff with you. They'll... Uh, talk to it, find it, pick a neurologist, look into it, kind of like research, try and find one close to you, find one that kind of seems like they're the mentality that you can handle. Don't worry about too much about their background or anything. If you, you definitely want to get one that has some multiple sclerosis knowledge. A lot of them do not. And like I lost my one that was close to me. The new lady that came in, I had a virtual appointment with her and she's like I know nothing I she knows about MS but she doesn't know any uh, anything that could really help me so she wasn't knowledgeable enough for that so she referred me to the MS neurologist in our network and I went with that person which sadly it was the one I didn't last one I had that didn't work great Actually, before him, I ended up trying another one further away from me that ended up focusing more on CPAP crap than focusing on my MS stuff. Uh, then the next one in our network ended up not caring about being a doctor anymore and just was done with everything. He retired, got the one I originally wanted that they wouldn't give me the first two times and this doctor is not the doctor I was hoping for either so it's a crapshoot it's not gonna be fun it's gonna be hard you're gonna have if you don't search for someone with the knowledge you're gonna have doctors that are gonna say things that are gonna irritate you they're gonna not know what you're going through they're gonna consider certain things lazy issues uh, problematic issues uh, just things that they think they'll be able to cure with other things and they're not going to be able to uh, know this don't listen to anybody it is it's a life-ending disease i don't care what anybody says there is no cure for ms don't listen to people that say, oh, I had a cousin that had MS and they're perfectly fine now. They're all cured. It's like, no, they aren't. If they are, then you better get them on the TV news right away and be, so they know that they found the first person ever that's been cured from MS. You're not going to. It's a lifelong disease. And yeah, granted, someday something, they might come up with some miracle medication. But then again, what are we dealing with? I mean, we had medication for COVID and people still died and stuff. And now we're finding out that there were less births since people started taking COVID pills. And we're finding out, which you shouldn't have had less births. You should have had more births because people were stuck at home together. So there should have been more people getting knocked up, you would think. Uh, now we're finding out that people are having other neurological issues and dying that were on the medications. And so many people that took all three injections or two injections or different types of injections for their COVID. All so we're finding out they all had COVID. They all got it once, twice, three times. And it's like, oh, so obviously shit wasn't doing anything. We knew the mask weren't shit. It's like you're covering up your nose and mouth. Your eyes can collect just as much 
bacteria as anything else. I mean, your skin can collect the bacteria. It's like there is just so much bullshit behind it, but yet these doctors made tons of money. I mean, one key doctor that was in front of everybody, I mean, his wealth, financial wealth rating went up a couple billion dollars or whatever over the COVID event or a couple million dollars a year or whatever. And it's like, really? You're not profiting at all, but yet your financial wealth has gone up? I mean, <laughs> during a time when things should be harder to financially make it. And yeah, it's just such a joke with all these different things that they just push on us and put us through the opioid epidemic. I mean, I didn't want the damn things, but when I first finally got diagnosed with MS, doctors are popping opioid prescriptions in my hand left and right without me asking for it. I assuming they were getting kickbacks or something, but it's like, I didn't want them. I ended up my wife works at a pharmacy. I ended up giving so many of them back to the pharmacy when they do the yearly pickup on drugs and stuff. There's another plane flying around somewhere, but this one's way too high. I can't see it. And there's no clouds up there, so he's not behind a cloud. Just too high for me to see. But yeah, all these things that come out, Someone's profiting from it. It's, uh, whether it affects, whether it helps us or not, someone's making money off it. There's something wrong with it eventually in the long run. But I don't know what my rant started me on that for, but focus on the whole getting yourself started with just trying to understand what's going on with the disease. It's summertime right now, so you should definitely get some ice cooling devices. Uh, I'd say the majority of MS people are affected by heat. Uh, some are affected just by cold. Some are affected by both, like me. I get spasticity issues with the cold. I have my limbs give out and quit working with the heat if I overdo it. Uh, so it's always good to do that because otherwise if you go to an event or stuff because you're new to MS, you're used to being able to go to events and do things, uh, you'll be affected by, you might go somewhere and spend some time with friends for an hour or two and all of a sudden the next week or two you can't move. I mean, that happens with MS and it can wipe you out. So just be careful, pace yourself. Don't be afraid to have a cane or a walker or a seated device at events or wherever you go just so you have that support to help you get around without tons of issues. It's good for you. Uh, don't worry about embarrassment. Screw what other people think. And if it helps you get around further, then do it. Uh, get yourself signed up for the handicap placard. Get yourself... I don't care if you're never disabled. Get yourself on the social security list. Get the forms filled out. You could be still working with MS and then one day you can't move and you're sitting there, got no check coming in, nothing. And at least you can sit there and recontact social security and say, hey, I put an application in. I just wanna say I'm at this stage now and I can't work anymore, or I can't work at this moment, and I need occupational therapy and stuff like that, which your PCP can help you get hooked up with. Social Security will help you out until you get back to work or whatever happens. So take that all into consideration. Uh, talk to people, social network, look into different groups, uh, follow my podcast. <laughs> I talk about everything I'm else over the years uh, my audio podcast are getting pulled this month from the platform that they're on apparently but i am going to move them so they will be available eventually but i will be updating all my video podcasts will have new versions of all that that talk anyways i'll keep up on a, 
all the things that are important to us. But yeah, just talk to someone about it. There's so many groups online that can help you. If you do get on a DMT, usually you'll start on Copaxone. If not Copaxone, I'd say start on Ocrevus. That's just my opinion. I talk to a doctor, let them give you suggestions of what they think. Uh, but I wish I wouldn't have went on Copaxone first. I wish they would have jumped me right to Ocrevus. And I wouldn't have had the problems I had once I was on Ocrevus with getting my medication. And I ended up having to wait two to three weeks longer every every uh, infusion period. And that just set my MS off more by having that crap gap and then going into a delay pattern of not having the medication and then all of a sudden getting the medication. And it was just confusing the shit out of my body and causing more problems. So it's like if you can get on it, get on a good routine, make sure your insurances are all taken care of and covered, and just get it all set up. And it's just, it's number one is making sure that you're covered so you're not struggling while you're trying to get your medications and get your stuff, your disease modifying therapies all set up. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna be a struggle. You're gonna have to get used to a lot of issues, a lot of pains. It's a snowflake disease, so everybody's different. You could have hardly any problems. You could have just eye problems. You could have just pain problems. You could have just neurological problems or gait problems. You could have bowel problems, sexual sexual issues. Uh, and there's just so many things that are going to affect your life, or maybe not. I and mean, you could get lucky and only have a few. Or be like me and have <laughs> 80 to 90% of the issues. I mean, the only things I haven't really gotten too bad on was the optic issues, other than the critters, the cloudiness, and now this past probably two years, the optic neuritis is starting on the left side of my face, basically from my left eye up into my skull my left cheek pretty much up into my skull it just radiates throughout there different types of pains over periods but yeah be prepared for all that and then just look on if you know what disease modifying your drug drug you are going to be on go on to a facebook page for that drug and there's the ocrevus ones there's casimpta there's copaxone ones all of them have their own social networking sites so get on one ask questions get all the information you need before you start it and then people will help you with it while you're on it if you're on an injectable like copaxone you're going to deal with welts and stuff at the injection sites there's key things you can do you can heat the area and then inject and then ice the area afterwards and there's different tricks that you can do for things. I think it's heat first and then inject and then ice later. Don't take my word for it because it's been a while. Got ourselves a monarch butterfly hanging out in the flowers. This is why I keep these flowers out here because we have a tree that a year, last year I think, no, no, two years ago my one tr bush was just loaded with monarch butterflies. They had all their babies and stuff on there. Just all the the whole tree was alive with monarchs. It was awesome because that's another species that we're losing. Uh, but yeah, so do the research, look into things, follow my podcast, at least my MS episodes, and talk to people. I, I'm here. If I'll gladly email back and forth with anybody that wants to ask questions i'll try and help you how i can but definitely talk to your doctors i'm not a doctor so talk to them i just give you my what i've gone through and let you know stuff like that but definitely talk to a doctor keep up with them and uh we'll get back to you soon so and end this here because it's a half hour and i gotta do one more video and i gotta have enough room to do it so Rate, review, subscribe, tell a friend, keep following me, 
Uh, we'll get back with another one of these again soon. So take care and enjoy your week. Bye.